We're making pan pizza today. You know the one with the crispy, slightly greasy crust? It's really airy, crunchy, gooey on top. You know the one that came from the place with the red and white checkered tablecloths? This whole thing is made with the simplest of ingredients and with a no-need crust and a no-cook sauce. Mm. We can do this. I did not unload that dishwasher. All right, so for the crust, we're just gonna start out with all-purpose flour. A lot of pizza crust recipes you'll see have bread flour. I don't think it's necessary. I think we can do this. So when you measure your flour, you know you don't wanna go in like this or you're gonna end up with too much flour. You wanna give it a little stir and then spoon it into your measuring cup. I like to spoon more than I need and then scrape off the top. Okay, while this is a no-knead dough, it is an overnight dough. The longer it has to develop, the better. The only thing you have to do when you make this pizza is plan ahead. A day ahead is best. I'm gonna go in with one and a quarter teaspoons of the yeast, which is about half a packet. I just stir it right in, I don't even bloom it. And then a teaspoon of salt, and then some warm water. Don't look at this mess, this is a mess. Before I add the water in, I'm gonna stir in about a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. This is just giving it some flavor. I'm gonna whisk the dry ingredients first just to get all that yeast evenly distributed. And then in goes our wet. And then we're just gonna stir it until it all comes together. Then once you get it together, you can kinda use your hands. This is not kneading, this is just incorporating. That's it, nothing fancy. You gotta admit, that's probably the easiest dough you've ever made. You wanna do this in a bowl that is bigger than what you see here because it is going to rise and expand. We want it to double, triple, quadruple. The bigger the better. Just don't be alarmed that this dough is a little bit wet and sticky. That is what you want. Just gonna cover it with some plastic wrap. So we want this to rest at minimum for eight hours, but preferred at least 24 hours. If you're going to do anything less than 24 hours, I just recommend leaving it out on the countertop. If you've got that full 24 hours, then just stick it in the fridge until you're ready. Obviously, I'm not gonna make you wait overnight. Let's go get the one I did yesterday. Voila. The hard part is done. You have to get started still a couple hours before you're ready to actually cook the pizza. So you wanna bring this out, dust it with a little more flour to make it workable and get it out of the bowl. You'll see it's still a little bit wet and sticky. That's what we want. And we're just gonna kinda fold it under and then just kinda seal it up. It's somewhat of a ball shape. See how it's got those bubbles in there? That's good. That means that yeast is doing its job. This is really soft. You can definitely still feel the moisture that's in your dough. That's what we want. Take your skillet, we're gonna grease it up. You wanna go pretty liberal here, and then get your hand all in and around and up the sides. This, of course, is gonna keep it from sticking to the pan, but it's also going to be with the dough fries in, you know, kinda cooks in, that's what we want. Spread it out. This dough is still really cold from the fridge, so as it warms up to room temperature, it's also gonna really relax and start to spread out. And then this rest, at least an hour, but two is preferred. I'm just gonna keep it covered and then just keep it kind of in a warm spot in your kitchen. For the sauce. Had to make a quick trip to the garden to get some fresh basil. Look, nobody had to see the garden. This is a no-cook sauce because these pizzas cook at at minimum 400 degrees, the sauce is gonna get cooked. So I'm going to start with crushed tomatoes. You don't want a sauce that's too watery. That's the main thing we're trying to avoid. So I'm just gonna dump that into a bowl. I think these are thicker than if you start with whole tomatoes and crush them yourself. Those can, you know, they have a lot of water in the can. And just as a little added insurance, I'm just gonna kinda pat the top just to make sure there's no like big time water on it. You can see it kind of like soaking in right there. What we don't want to do is make that beautiful crust that we've worked so hard on soggy. No. We want saucy, crusty, cheesy, gooey. So to even thicken this up a little more, I'm going in with some tomato paste, about a quarter cup, and then just kind of mix that around till that tomato paste is all incorporated. To that, I'm going in with some olive oil. And then I'm adding fresh garlic. You could also just do garlic powder, but if you have a press, you just want it really small. And then everything else just comes from your spice cabinet, okay? So I'm gonna do about a half a teaspoon of basil. 
I did not mean to do that. My original thought was, if you don't have fresh basil, put the striped basil in. But y'all remember, just got the fresh basil. You can use fresh or dried basil, or both, like I'm doing. And then a whole teaspoon of the oregano. Some salt. I love a good bit of black pepper in my tomato sauce. Finally, just sugar. While it is required to plan ahead to make pan pizza, what's really great is that it's all make ahead. I mean, you could do this three, four, five days before. You can do the crust one to two days before. Then when it comes time Friday night and you wanna have some good pizza without going to the hut, and you've got it and it's gonna be better. Oh. Mm. Didn't even think I was gonna nail it that much. Remember when they used to say like, you could have your pizza in 30 minutes or less? Well, once we come back, it'll be 30 minutes or less. Time to build and talk cheese. You want something with low moisture, so I'm using low moisture part skim mozzarella. And just like I've told you before, we wanna shred our own cheese. We don't want the pre-shredded stuff. It's not gonna melt as easily. It's not gonna be quite as creamy. Plus, you get more bank for your buck when you just shred it yourself. Let's check our crust. This has been resting for a couple hours. You can see how it has spread nicely. And now we're just gonna finish that spread all the way to the edges. I know it may look like it's swimming in oil, but it's okay. Oh yeah, look how soft. If there are big bubbles, I'm gonna go ahead and pop those, but just small bubbles, that's fine. Oh my God, this is gonna be so good. All right, now we top. I like to put a little bit of cheese down first and make it go like to the edges because you know, when you get that kind of crinkly, cheesy, crispy crust, perfect bites. This is also gonna be a barrier from the sauce to the crusts. And then I like to go in with a little bit of parm and I'm purposely getting it on the outer edges. Okay, and then down with our sauce. Spread it out. So I'm just going cheese and pepperoni. So now let's talk about the oven before I put it in. If I was doing just a thin crust pizza, I would keep my oven at like 500, but because this does have to bake through, I'm lowering it a little bit. So I'm cooking this at 400 degrees. You also wanna put your rack in the bottom third of your oven because what we're looking for is a really cooked bottom. So the closer it is to the bottom, the better. We want bottom heat when it comes to cooking this and the pizza stone is a great way. However, if you don't have one, do not go and buy one for this. I'll show you the solution to that when it comes out. And if you do have one, you wanna preheat it with your oven. And that should just take about 20 minutes. It's gonna be so good, y'all. Oh, look at that, look at that. Now, now, now. Before we take this out, we know this is all about the crust. So we have to peek at the crust. All this looks perfect, but underneath I need more color. You see that? Conveniently, you can just place this right on the stove top. And this will only take a couple minutes, so you can crank up your stove. But keep your eye on it so you don't burn it. This will kind of happen pretty fast, so just keep checking. Oh yeah. You see it? Oh, that is good. No pizza oven, no fancy nothing required. Now we worked so hard to get that crust crispy. We're not gonna just let it sit because it'll start to steam. So we, we're gonna get it out to a wire rack. You don't just wanna put it on a cutting board. That's where it will really steam. You hear this? Yes. This right here is the best bite, look at that. This cheese toasted on bread, saucy bite. Mm. We know what happens if you go to cut this pizza right now, everything's just gonna slide off. We're gonna let it settle. It'll still be nice and hot. Our mouth just started watering. Success, let me show you why. Let me show you why it's a success. Do you see how airy this is? Not soggy, it's still dry. Got little pockets of air. Better look at that crust. One bite, everyone knows the rules. I'm so excited. Mm. Mm. Everything about this is delicious, it's nostalgic. It's better than the original, if I do say so myself. There's just so much flavor. You don't need to knead, you don't need to cook the sauce. Keep it everything simple, oh my God. You got a crunch. 
This is one of those pizzas where nobody doesn't eat the crust. The crust literally is the best part, and it's its own little, like, breadstick. You heard that? I think you should be making it today. It's a good day. I prefer to keep, ooh. 